Welcome to the NHL 94 podcast, part of the CBP Media Network. This podcast is dedicated to the greatest game ever developed, where I will talk about the development of the game, tournaments and matches, our stories about NHL 94, the people that make up the NHL 94 community, the games won, lost, and the chirps that need to be heard around the world. Hello and welcome to the NHL 94 podcast. I'm Len and this is the debut show, the premiere episode, the pilot, first episode, whatever you want to call it, this is number one. And before we go any further, the reason why I'm doing this podcast is that I did some searching recently because I've recently got back into NHL 94. I'll explain that in a little bit. And I couldn't find any podcasts that were just dedicated specifically to NHL 94. I was able to find some shows that talked about it on one-off in one episode or even like a couple of episodes, but nothing that is dedicated specifically to NHL 94. So there was a void and hopefully the vacuum will be filled with this podcast. And I just want to say that the community of NHL 94 is extremely strong. I came across it not too long ago And I am impressed given the fact that NHL 94 came out about 30 years ago, a little bit more in fact. It was um, October 1993, and I believe that is when it hit North American shores on both the Genesis and SNES. And yeah, so a lot of this recent uptick in the NHL community, including myself, the NHL 94 community, is due as a result of the documentary by the folks at Noclip. They did the making of NHL 94, the 30th anniversary documentary, which is an incredible documentary if you're a fan of NHL 94. Totally recommend you watch it. It's available on YouTube and it's comprehensive. It talks behind the scenes with the people that developed the game, how it is they got to the point of developing NHL 94. It's incredible stuff. I totally recommend everybody check it out. Um, I just want to touch on my experience with NHL 94, how it is I came across it, because everybody has their own story, and I'm just going to give you mine. And I am somebody that was born in the late 70s, 77 to be specific. And I had a Genesis growing up. I also had a Super Nintendo as well. And we got the NHL 92 and also had Madden 92 for my Genesis. Never got to play um, NHL on SNES until a little bit later on my friend got it across the street and by the way I'm not a fan of it for whatever reason I just don't like it it seems to be rather choppy at least that's what I remember about it when I was going to my friend's house it didn't look as smooth and as fluid as the, the Genesis version so that could be wrong it might be just the uh, nostalgia or anything that's making the Genesis one appear better but for whatever reason I never really got into the SNES version and so I uh, my apologies for the people that prefer that. I'm a Genesis guy with respect to NHL 94. I love my, I love the SNES in other, for other games, but definitely not NHL 94. And I'm not even going to talk about the Genesis CD, which is the redheaded stepchild of the NHL 94 family. So as I mentioned, we had Madden 92 and we also had NHL 92. And I played, we played the shit out of both those and Madden 92 was incredible and it t- the documentary from no clip mentions the connection the direct connection between Madden the Madden series and NHL so that's why I'm bringing up the Madden 92 because I did play it I enjoyed playing it the 92 Madden version is something I really liked because it had the ambulance coming on the field of play so if you injure one of your players Famously, the fam- the ambulance would come on and run over all the players. So we would try to do quarterback sneaks after play after play until the quarterback got injured and watch the players get run over by the ambulance. It was great stuff. Anyways, NHL 92, which by the way has really great... The intro music was the best one of all the NHLs that I played. We loved that game. We played that like crazy. And even though like we had it we did not know that NHL 92 did not have the blessing 
of the NHL NHLPA. Because if you play it, you know that there's going to be numbers, but no names for the players. You get the team names, but no player names. Never thought about that at the time. Then NHL 93 came out, and it was the exact opposite. It got the blessing of the NHLPA, but not the NHL. So there would be no team names, but players and numbers are there. Never thought about it then. Is it just after several years of after looking at uh, watching a documentary, I was able to, to figure that out thanks to not uh, figuring out they told it to me. So as a kid, I never really clued in on that, that the, the NHLPA and the NHL didn't give the blessing on the consecutive 92 and 93 year NHL games. And the fighting in 93, by the way, was incredible where you could fight. In, like 92 had fighting, but you were limited in a, a space, like a very small window of space where you could actually move in 93 you could move from left to right from board to board essentially and the fighting was great and you could injure people when you fight and that was funny when you injure somebody and you knock them out for the game they would have to skate back to the penalty box nursing their injuries and they have to struggle to get there it was always very comical to watch so yeah we played NHL 92 like crazy 93 never had it friend had it played with him but then 94 came out and that was took everything that was great and made it even better except for the fighting I wish I wish I wish somehow the fighting was kept in or at least the code was somehow saved so we could try it out 30 years later because from the documentary it was noted that the NHL was not going to give their blessing as long as the fighting remained in the game so they had to strip it out. And they did this at a point where the fighting was at an advanced stage that it basically was ready to ship like that. And they were going to have, from what I understand, you could pull the jersey over players' heads and stuff like that. So we lost a really good aspect of the game thanks to NHL. Thanks, NHL. Anyway, the fact that the fighting was not in there didn't detract too much from the game. The game play for NHL 94 is incredible for everybody that is listening to this. So we got NHL 94. My brother, who was three years older than I, we used to play a ton. We played the shit out of this game. Not just he and I, but then my friend across the street and anybody else, and a friend of family got the game too. Like Everybody who had a Genesis seemed to have had NHL 94. It just seemed like the game that people had also, not just a pastime, but to settle disputes. No longer did you have to go to the schoolyard and duke it out in the, in the field or whatever it's now any disputes just play the game whoever won they're the winner this is the way any, all conflicts should be dealt with on even on a global scale right now we should just have people countries play it out nhl 94 style whoever wins they're the winner anyways <clears throat> played the crap out of this had so much fun the one thing that i noticed my brother used to play with his friends and I say this plural because one of his friends had the Genesis, the EA4 controller multi-tap port. That's the guy that you plug into your Genesis. It goes flush against the Genesis. Then you can plug up to four different controllers. And with that, you could play up to four players in NHL 94. That blew my mind. To watch four people in the same room play a game we all loved totally blew my mind the chirping was off the chart so watching this and i wasn't able to participate i was always just for the most part if somebody just looking at this watching them play jealous truly truly jealous but it didn't deter from the fact that nhl 94 was incredible on so many levels that four sorry that two on two action took the game up one extra notch so yeah so we played like crazy for that one year had so much fun with it then unfortunately nhl 95 came around what did i do i made a stupid move i traded in my nhl 94 plus some cash at the local flea market to get nhl 95 i thought nhl 95 was going to be great you know nhl 92 was good NHL 93 was better, 94 was even better, 
here's 95. It's got to be incredible, right? It's got all these new features. It says that they have block shots where you can get on the floor, get on the ice and block shots with your body. I believe they have that drop passes, one-time passes. I think they had all that, plus two-on-two, two, plus a, a goalie. That's it. You could have that on the ice. So, yeah, so it seemed like really good. Then you plug it in, try it out, and you're like, wait a minute. They changed the engine. NHL 95. Now, apologies here for people that like NHL 95. I hated it. It seemed like the players were skating on a rail. They could easily turn around without doing too much effort. And it was just really, really quick where they could just essentially do a 180. Couldn't do that in 94. It seemed like over on NHL 94, you were on ice. It was an exaggerated floating feeling, but that's what I was used to from NHL 92, 93, 94. That engine I liked, I adored, I preferred. 95? No, I didn't. It was, in my eyes, trash. So, yeah, I was not too happy with it. I played NHL 95. I bought it, so I had to play it as much as I could, you know, as a kid at the time, or, you know, at least in my late teens. So I, we played it, and yeah, it never, for me, it never gave me the same feeling I did when I played NHL 95, and that was unfortunate. So I never got to play NHL 94 again until a few years later where emulators and ROMs became available. So in the late 90s, early 2000s, you could download it for your computer and play it. And, it was, you know, it was fun, but it was always just against a computer. So you're limited in terms of the amount of fun you could have. Because one thing about NHL 94, when you have other players to play with, it's so much fun. So fast forward until just a few years ago, 2018, 2019, at the place I used to work at, at lunchtime, we used to play video games. And we used to brought in our old consoles and play you know, with our Xbox 360s, or even sometimes we'd bring in our Switch. So one time I decided, what the heck, I'm going to bring in my Raspberry Pi, which is loaded up with a bunch of different ROMs, arcade and also console ROMs. And it had four controllers. And, you know, we'll play some games like WrestleFest or the arcade version of Simpsons, you know, something that's a button masher, uh, just add in quarters and have fun, and, you know, just something where you don't have to put too much thought and, and um, effort into it, just really just time waster. But then I came up with the idea, holy cow, holy cow, we could play NHL 94. Tried it out. It was a hit because NHL 94 famously is easy to learn, difficult to master so the people that had experience with 94 such as myself we were able to obviously do pretty well but even the people that didn't they were easily able to pick it up and become decent enough <laughs> that they're a solid teammate or a formidable opponent so we played that standard rom two versus two and it was just absolutely phenomenal it just the chirping was off the chart then through the NHL 94 website, I was able to find a ROM. I don't know who did this. Whoever did this, got to give you kudos because the ROM that I found and used was a 2v2, two skaters plus goalie versus two skaters plus goalie for NHL 94. This is the feature that was available in NHL 95 out of the box. Somebody was able to manipulate this for the NHL 94. Not only that, the roster was incredible. It was the two best players plus the best goalie of that franchise. So if you're playing with the Penguins, for instance, you would have Lemieux and Yager and I think Barrasso and that. If you were with the, the uh, Red Wings, the two players they put on the ice were Fedorov and... Uh, who is it? Fedorov and Iserman. And they were phenomenal because they're so fast. You have so much space out there that speed just kills. So yeah, we played that so much. It was amazing stuff. So whoever did that loved that ROM. We thoroughly enjoyed it. So yeah, I mean, that's basically how I got back into NHL with just bringing it back to work. Then I saw the documentary maybe a few weeks ago, the one from No Clip. And yeah, it just really decided I have to do something with this. So I got back into the swing of things and I 
dove into the community and realized that there is a thriving Discord and also a forum on NHL 94 website. But Discord is just thriving. It's so many people there. And it's a lot of different discussion going on. Genesis, SNES, not a big fan of SS, SNES, as I said, but for NHL 94, that is. But yeah, people want to play with it. That's fine. And through there, I was able to install the um, RetroArch, I think it was, on my computer. I have Linux running, so it took me some time and effort. And with the help of, I got to give some credit here, Blizzard. Blizzard spent a lot of time with me getting to the point where I actually could play it online. So with that, finally was able to set up NHL 94 online. And I played my first game against J225, who handed me my first and only defeat. Haven't had a win yet, so then I'm 0 and 1. 6 to 4 final. I was the Canucks, he was the Flames. I think it was it should have been 6 to 3, but I think he gave me a freebie at the end. Either way, I'll take the 6 to 4. And J225, I'm going to come after you. Mark my words, you will lose to me one way or another. Just kidding. Um, he, he's a really good opponent, and I have a lot to learn. One of the things that I did realize is I'm using Wi-Fi. It's very choppy, so I finally bit the bullet, got the hardwired, and then just arrived today. So I'm actually going to try it out sometime in the next few days. And maybe, well, maybe I could actually give J225 and somebody else uh, a run for their money. But anyways, that that's basically my story into NHL 94 and how I got back into NHL 94. Thoroughly enjoy the game. Love it. The community is thriving. It is active and it's very helpful. And so anybody that's looking to get into NHL 94, check out the Discord. It is, as I mentioned, you get a lot of different information over there, a lot of people helping you out. So that's it. And I would love to hear your story about how you got into NHL 94, how it is you still play it. So what you could do is simply just drop me an email and you can send me an email at NHL94pod at gmail.com. So I'd love to hear your stories because I want to hear everybody's stories out there how they got in, and how they're enjoying the beautiful game of NHL 94. Also, you could catch me on Twitter, or X, I don't know what you call it these days. And I'm at the handle at NHL 94 podcast. And finally, if you like this, is I'll do some more in, in the very near future, and you want to hear more of my work, I'm also on the Canadian Bitcoiners podcast. And me and Joey were the co-host of that show. We've been doing this for almost three years. So we've been doing that. And so if you want some information about Bitcoin, we're on the Canadian Bitcoiners podcast. So with that, keep your stick on the ice, keep your controller plugged in, and we'll be back at this very soon.